would consider myself to be a person who is very generous with my star ratings. Even if I just kind of felt, mm, it was fine about a book, I give it a three stars. And so for every book that I've rated a three stars, there's probably two books that I've rated five stars. I have a lot of five star books. But looking back at the books that I have read so far this year, these are my absolute favorites. First off, we have A Court of Mist and Fury and A Court of Wings and Ruin. Now these are books two and three of the Akatar series. Now I can't really tell you what these books are about because this is a spoiler free review, but Akatar follows Feyre. She kind of gets herself caught up in the Fey world. She has been raised to hate these beings and accidentally gets caught up in them because she might have killed one and so like as retribution for her crimes she now has to go live in the Fey realm and she ends up in the spring court with the High Lord Tamlin and maybe these creatures aren't as bad as she thought they were. Maybe she kind of likes them. I don't know, maybe. Maybe they kind of like her. A Court of Mist and Fury is the book that everybody tells you to wait for once you start reading Akatar. It is most people's favorite book and I can definitely say it was worth the hype, okay? It was super cute, loved it, had a great time reading it. I was texting two of my friends while I was reading like the last like 100 pages of this book and they really got to enjoy my unfiltered thoughts and it was just so fun. I definitely think if you didn't like Akatar, A Court of Thorns and Roses, the first one, you should definitely stick it out to read this one, okay? I'm just gonna add to the million other people that have probably already told you that. But then we have A Court of Wings and Ruin. Now, this one was actually my personal favorite. I bawled like a baby at the last, last 50 pages of this book, okay? I had trouble like, seeing the words on the pages through my tears, okay? It took me probably three times as long to read those pages as it normally would have because I would collect myself, pick the book back up, read two more pages, and have to put back the book back down because I couldn't see the pages anymore from my fresh tears, okay? Because I am the type of person who doesn't necessarily always cry at the sad parts of books, but the like wholesome, sweet parts of books are my favorites and the ones that always get to me the most emotionally. For some reason, I enjoyed it with this book. Next I have Cascade and Torrent. These are books two and three in the River of Time series by Lisa T. Berggren. This series follows Gabby and Leah. They are the daughters of archeologists who are in Italy to explore a new archeological site with their parents and they stumble upon a tunnel that transports them back in time to 14th century Italy. And you know, with their 21st century antics, they kind of make a little bit of a name for themselves. And so this series is basically just following them in their lives in the 14th century. And th there might be some hot nights in this book. You might think that and be like, oh no, like knights, 14th century. Yes, okay, he's from the 14th century and she's from the 21st century. You would think that they would have a little bit of a difference of opinion into uh, women, what they can and can't do. However, the man in this book, somehow he really doesn't let any of his prejudices against women interfere with his girl and her 21st century antics and behaviors. So her personality and everything is not stifled and that's just really great. Then we have the Carval series by Stephanie Garber. This series follows another set of two sisters, Scarlett and Donatella. They have grown up always wanting to get to experience the magic that is Carval, which is kind of a traveling circus escape room competition thing. Basically all of these people gather at Carval and they follow these clues to try to win the prize. Well Donatella runs away to go visit Carval. So of course, Scarlet being the chronic older sister has to run after her to save her baby sister and ends up having to participate in Carval because somehow her sister has become the prize of this year's Carval. This book series is just so magical and Stephanie Garber really does paint an amazing picture in your head of the setting of all of the characters and you really feel immersed in the story. And I just loved it. This was one of the series that I binge read. Like as soon as I finished the first book, immediately had to pick up the second book. And I don't always do that with series. I tend to try to draw them out 
and that way I can spend more time in the world. But this one I couldn't resist, I couldn't do that. I had to start reading the next ones as soon as I finished the previous ones. So I'm so excited to start reading Once Upon a Broken Heart, the like follow-up interconnected series to Caraval. It's definitely gonna be a series I will reread in the future. The Inheritance Games by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. What would you do if out of the blue you find yourself the sole heir of a billionaire that you've never met before in your life? Well, Avery doesn't have to imagine what she would do in that situation because she actually lives that situation. And the only way for her to inherit these billions of dollars is that she has to go to Texas and live at his estate for a year with his entire family who has been disinherited by him. So now Avery and the rest of the family are desperate to know what makes Avery so special? Why did this man leave all of his money to her? This book is so captivating. It is so intriguing. And like with every page, you are trying to figure out the puzzles and the riddles before the characters can. And it just has such Knives Out vibes, which is one of my absolute favorite movies of all time. It is my airplane movie. I watch it every time I am on a Southwest flight. And it just, it's so cozy, but like keeps you on the edge of your seat. It's another super bingeable series, one where I read all three of them in like five days. And the last one actually made me cry. Once again, not because the book was sad, but because I just was overwhelmed at the effort and thought that Jennifer Lynn Barnes had clearly put into these books with the intricacies that connect to the very beginning of the first book to the very end of the last book and I just couldn't handle it in my own brain so I had to cry about it. But I loved it. It's so good. Then we have Say You Swear. This book is essentially just a Wattpad book. If you grew up reading Wattpad you know what I'm talking about. Those like cheesy teen fiction books that you would read where they were all literally essentially the same story except maybe the characters had different names. Ariana has been in love with her brother's best friend for as long as she can remember but then they kind of have a falling out the summer before they're both set to go off to college. The same college with, along with their two other friends and her brother her twin brother. So that's really great for her. The beginning of her college experience is kind of difficult for her because she's left wallowing over this other guy. And she meets Noah Riley, who is the star of the school's football team. And they just start up a relationship. Obviously there's much more to the story than that, but it's not really anything I can say that's not a spoiler. This book has Noah Riley, who is my absolute favorite book boyfriend I've ever read. Because this man, he's number one, an excellent communicator, which you never see in romance books, okay? He makes it very clear what his intentions are and his feelings, and you never see that in a romance book. And two, throughout the book you can see how the main motivation behind the decisions that he's making is his girl. She's his number one most important person in his life and in his decision making. And it's just adorable. Then the last book is Funny Story by Emily Henry. Daphne and Miles are kind of going through it right now because their significant others ran off with each other. Their significant others, Peter and Petra, were childhood best friends and have decided now after all these years that they're actually 100% infatuated in love with each other and they can't live without each other. So now their exes, Daphne and Miles, are kind of thrown for a loop because they both moved to this super small town in Michigan where they knew absolutely nobody and now they're kind of stuck. And because they live in a super small town in Michigan where they know absolutely nobody, they end up as roommates. Emily Henry has this way of writing romance books that have such a strong literary plot where it's almost as if the romance is a subplot rather than it being the primary genre of the book because the characters in these books dive so deep into their insecurities and the way that they interact with people and what motivates them to interact with people in that way and how that has affected the relationships that they've built in their adult lives and stuff and the stuff that these characters are figuring out about themselves and trying to heal from is so deep and Daphne, our female main character in this book, she is me, okay? 
I am Daphne. I have truly never related so much to another female main character in a book before. Like I found myself frequently like with my jaw on the floor at like how much I relate to Daphne. Originally I gave this book like a four-ish stars but I think since I finished this book back in like beginning of July I think, I think I'm gonna have to give it a five stars because I just, I think about this book at least once a day, sometimes twice. I'm just like oh my gosh. Emily Henry I pray that you never stop writing books because this is incredible, okay? Anyways, those are all of my favorite books that I have read so far in 2024. It is only the middle of October, so we have two and a half months left until the end of the year, and I hope that I can add some more to this list by the time 2025 rolls around. How crazy is that? We have two and a half months until 2025. Anyways, that is all I have for you guys today. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and comment down below your absolute favorite book that you have read so far in 2024. I'd love to get some of y'all's recommendations to add to my TBR. And subscribe to my channel for more bookish content in the future. I hope you'll have a lovely rest of your day and I will see you guys next time. Bye!